These are so luxurious, an awesome, low-cost way to be not just mobile, but really have a wonderful and comfortable setup when you are traveling around or if you choose to live in a more mobile structure as a life way. Very excited to be introducing you to the newest member of the Buckskin Revolution team, which is my new wall tent from Spring Bar. This is a very unique design of wall tent. So a lot of folks are used to that kind of classic military style wall tent that you would see at Civil War re reenactments or all kinds of you know wilderness camping situations, hunting camps, that kind of thing. These are really unique in that they have the poles with them and the poles themselves provide the tension to hold the tent up. So they're great in wind because they have kind of rounded corners. They give you much more workable space inside than the classic kind of a-frame or you know classic peaked house style looking tent because almost the entire thing is the full height so a lot more workable space and they're easy to put up by oneself which is a real benefit for me because i travel around with these so often and teach also expecting the sucker to be my bedroom as well as my teaching headquarters they're also really compatible with wood stoves and set up to be able to use wood stoves really, really awesome design. I've worked for years with uh, the competitor to this guy, K Cody at Canvas, and I started having leaks in that tent really early on. These are the folks that actually created this design, and this is a way better built tent. So I am very excited to be leveling up. And so I'm gonna walk you through the setup and show you all of the lovely features of this awesome tent. Couldn't be more excited, and you're gonna be seeing this in a lot more of my videos. I'm gonna be doing a lot of teaching out of this sucker. All right, let's get it set up. First thing is to spread out the tent and then we're going to stake it down because it is the tension between those stakes into the ground and the poles lifting the tent that provide the framework and the structure for the tent. And may I introduce my handsome assistant, Taylor Donovan, helping me today. <laughs> Hello. Ah, ooh, nice plastic bathtub floor. All right. Want to do a warm up and throw that back and forth a few times? Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> it's kind of heavy. I know. And that camera probably needs to be adjusted. It can only be adjusted so much because that's the one that's stuck in permanent three times zoom. So oh, that's the it one. It now can only take detailed photos. And this... It doesn't show my... All right. Stakes and what have you. Okay. There's a bunch of silicone beads. Okay. So the liability of my old tent, which was from the Kodiak Canvas camp Company, was that when it was set up, the seams at the floor actually would be pried open a little bit by the tension of popping the top up, and it would actually pry the stitches apart and have them facing up to the sky. So it didn't leak from the ceiling or the other seams, but water just poured in through the floor seams. So I'm very, very pleased with this system, which is a nice strong cord into the seam, and then it's metal poles that are not putting tension on the seam. So my seam is nothing exposed from the outside and it's gonna be facing down instead of facing up. So I'm already sold on this system and it was one of the things that I noticed about this right away and was super, super pleased to see. All right, so once the tent is laid out on the ground where we want it, then the first step is driving in the stakes I usually start with the corners and make sure that I get the corners all square 90 degrees and then I go around and fill in and they need to be in really well because it is the tension basically it is these stakes that are 
holding tension between this and the ceiling pole. So super important. And you always want to put your stakes in at an angle because that way when they're under tension, the tension of the tent itself isn't going to be pulling them up. So we're going to be driving them at an angle towards the tent, not straight down. Way easier for them to get pulled up if they're straight down. So once I've got two sides done, then I'm gonna give a good tug to the corner that's exactly opposite, just to make sure that I've got all the corners square. When I'm around to the final one, it should be evenly tensioned from both sides. Yeah. So now the tent is staked out and now it is time for the poles. Seriously, like such an amazing system. Setting up a standard wall tent with heaps of big wooden poles, 14 foot length ridge poles. It's a four person job. This one, one person job. More pleasant and lovely with two, but you can do it by yourself if you need to. So part of what the spring bar refers to is the spring tension that is used to keep this tent up. So we've got two uprights that fit into a tension mount system that holds the ceiling taut. So there's going to be two spring bars on each end of each side and then a bar that goes between those keeping those pushed apart from one another. So that's creating that tension and then the uprights holding the whole thing up. So super sweet system. Spring bars. So one of these in each side. And these fit into a little sleeve on the ceiling, Yana. You just put it in with the rubber side out. Well, rubber tip in. All right. And now it's time for the tensioning bar. Okay. So the spring bars fit into this little T of the tensioning bar. them out as uncreased as possible. This side. And then you want to do one actually up close showing how this fits in. Maybe from like above. If that makes sense. Until they're both up against this piece here. Okay. And now comes the magic. So now these poles fit together Here's where the tension part comes in. Okay. And now this sleeve comes here, locks into place and holds that tension. And now I've got these spring bars holding the whole ceiling taut. 
so I just kind of work out any creases, make sure it's all nice and flat, evenly distributed along those spring bars. Yeah. So now it's time for the uprights. All right, so now fitting the uprights into the top tension pole like that. And then using them to leverage up the ceiling. There we go. So this seated right on that metal, the metal stake loop with a little piece of canvas to hold this up. And then the second one is gonna actually make it a tent. Little insider tip, you always want to have at least one door open because otherwise it can't expand because it's a vacuum in there and it has to be able to slurp air in in order to fully expand to full tent size. Assemble this, smallest, shortest spot. I'm not sure why you would ever need it taller than this. I don't know why they need to be adjustable heights. There. So this is slick just to have this more secure. This little system just cinches the tent down to the upright on this side. And this is the side that has the window that can zip out so that the stove jack can go in here. And because the chimney is gonna be passed here and you're gonna be using this for some support for the chimney, that's why it's more secure and actually tied in to the tent structure itself. Sweet system. All right. And there we have it, that was not long. I could check the camera to see how much time has elapsed. 24 minutes. 24 minutes. Two people. The only part that Taylor helped with really was driving a couple of the stakes. So probably I could have done this in half an hour easy on my own. Check it out. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Oh, you got all these. <coughs> More stuff. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, lots of cross draft, gear loft, lots of nice storage compartments, <coughs> lovely windows and a spot to roll the window up nicely. Yeah, look at that. Sweet. Then you can watch the marmots from in here. Here's the door. So much ventilation, wow. Okay, awning poles. And then two stakes for each of the awning poles. So we're gonna wanna see about where we want that pole to be. You always want your awning pole at an angle. It's really nice that they're adjustable because that way you can adjust your angle. So. If it's raining, you want your awning to be down a little bit so it doesn't collect a bunch. If it's the middle of the day, having as much shade as possible is nice. So it's always gonna be more stable with a little bit of an angle. Two awning poles with a loop that just fits over the top of each. So I wanna drive my stake at about a 45 degree angle to the pole. So if I was to draw a line from the pole to the tent and then about 45 degrees out from that line. Drive again at an angle. And then this handy dandy little toggle is my tensioner. Just a simple piece of wood with two holes in it. So when it's not under tension, this slides up and down. When it's under tension, it catches taut. So you could do the same thing with just some cordage and a taut line hitch, but this is really easy to do that without needing knots. And we'll do the other one. The fly upright's about 70 degree angle or so, and uh, then 45 degree 
to the steak. Steak. 45 degrees out. And I really like the little grommets here so that the steak isn't putting tension on the rope. There we go. So I can adjust the angles of the poles to the tent, the angles of the stakes, and the angles that the uprights are to one another to get this exactly how I want. So if I was in a lot of wind or a lot of rain, then I could adjust them accordingly. Check out the lovely commodious accommodations in there. This is gonna be awesome. I've been working in gatherings in a 10 by 10 wall tent that is a little bit awkward because it's been leaking from the floor seams and I can't fit all of my students in at one time if it's really cold or if it's raining. Some people have to sit under the awning or under their own umbrellas. It's very inconvenient. So this tent is gonna be able to take an entire class of buckskin sewing or any of my talks or lectures at gatherings. It's very exciting.